Hello, friends, and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about Orb of Venom and Blightstone. Two different items. You buy them for different reasons. But they're kind of similar in my mind. And I think it's helpful to compare and contrast them. So we're going to do them both in the same video here. Let's just get into it. I think that'll make it easier. I, I was going to say more, but I don't think we have to. Let's start with Orb of Venom. First, this item is 300 gold. Now, for both of these, they're both 300 gold. And a lot of the time, at least for Orb of Venom and somewhat so for Blightstone as well, if you're going to buy one of these, it's probably as a starting item, if you're a support anyways, and it's a little uncommon to buy it after that, maybe you will, but a lot of the times you will buy it with your starting gold. And so that's why we're considering this, because 300 is half your starting gold. That means if you need to buy two sets of Tangos, a Salve, a Sentry, that's it. Let's remove the sentry. Maybe you can buy a mango instead. That's it. You can't get anything else. Because this is 300. That's half your starting gold. So if you're a hero that needs a lot of mangoes or clarities to play the lane, or you're against a burst lineup and you're a fragile hero, so you need to get some stats to tank up, if you have to buy... I guess you don't have to buy a magic stick, but you're against like a bristleback or a bat rider, and there's like a ton of value there to get a magic stick... Well, then it's going to be really hard to fit an Orb of Venom into your build, but maybe it's possible. Point is, your hero kind of has to be fairly self-sufficient before you can consider buying Orb of Venom. Next, let's look at these stats. There are no stats. There's only an effect when you right-click someone. Unlike Windlace, unlike Ring of Regen, Mask of... Sage's Mask. I don't know where I was going with that. I was, I was about to say Mask of Madness. Those items, you can play the lane, or you could go pull, and you're still getting a, a benefit. This only applies when you right-click. And so unless you are right-clicking the enemy a lot, you're not getting value out of this item. So that's one thing. We have to be a hero that wants to right-click a lot. We're going to get two damage per second for two seconds for a total of four damage, which can be reduced. It's magic damage. So you don't even get 4 damage. You get a little less than that. We don't buy it for damage. If you wanted 4 damage, you could buy 4 Iron Branches. That would be a lot better because you would get all the attributes and the stats that go with it. You would get more health, mana, armor, like everything. That would be way better. In terms of damage, this is not a damage item. It used to be. You used to get a lot of damage from this item and then it was broken and everyone was building it and then that got nerfed. So... It's no longer a damage item. Don't think about the damage when you're buying this. The slow is why you buy this. So 15% if you're a melee hero, 4% if you're ranged. 4% sucks. So if you're a ranged hero, you really shouldn't buy this item. It's really bad. The one hero I can think... No, I'm not even going to say it. Ranged hero should not buy this item. I'll declare it, okay? We'll just go with that. I don't think, unless this item gets changed and patched, and they add more damage to it, or they increase the slow, I just don't think it's good on ranged heroes. I think it's really bad. But melee heroes, 15%, that's a lot. That is really good. So before, let, in, to break that down, let's start talking about some of these points. So you're a melee hero, you get the slow, and what does that mean? You should have enough damage. That means all you need to do is right-click the hero to do your damage. Someone like Treant Protector. He's got the right-click damage. He doesn't need to buy more Iron Branches or Fairy Fires to get a little bit more damage. He has damage. He just needs to hit the enemy heroes. He's a slow hero, though. And his attack's slow. Slow as all can be. But if you slow the enemy hero, that helps a lot. Because you slow them when you punch, and then you walk up to them, and you can hopefully get in a second punch, and you have a ton of damage already. And so that's, that's what the Orb of Venom's for to let you get that second attack off. Maybe even the third, and so on. Treant Protector really struggles with that, but other, other melee heroes might be able to. That's kind of tied to this. You're prone to being kited, so like Treant Protector, usually you see him, like you get punched once, but then you just run away. He never gets the second punch off. And then as a melee hero, you turn around because you're no longer getting to attack the enemy hero, especially if they're ranged. And now they're ranged, and they get off several attacks on you, and then that trade ends up favoring them. But if you slow them and you get multiple attacks off, that balances out the trade, possibly even into your favor. Ideally into your favor. That's why you're buying this item. Next, 
The slow only matters if the enemy is trying to run away. If they just stand there and fight you, the slow does nothing. And then what are we getting? We're getting two damage per second. That's not even that good though, because if you're attacking every second, this doesn't like, this doesn't stack, okay? It just refreshes the duration. So you punch them, you get two damage, and then you punch them again, it refreshes. So you're still only getting two damage. So you're not even getting the full four damage, which was already reduced by magic damage. So if they just stand there and fight you, this item sucks. It doesn't do anything. It's only good if they are afraid to fight you because they know they will lose a trade once you're on top of them and so they need to run away. Then it's good. Then the slow kicks in. That is useful. If you use this, let's say you're like a tree and protector four and you punch an ogre magi, he might just fight you. And at that point, you could have gotten something else. The Orb of Venom is just not useful. It's not providing any damage. It's not providing much of a slow. You don't want the enemy hero to fight back. You want them to run away. It's also helpful for that same reason. If your teammates have a lot of damage and they just need to be able to attack. Ursa is not the best example since they changed his Q, but we'll go with Ursa anyways, where Ursa's got a lot of damage. You don't need to improve his damage. You just need to let Ursa attack the enemy heroes. And so if you slow them, that's like all Ursa needs. He'll, he'll do the rest of the damage himself. That's another reason Orb of Venom is good. Be careful, though. Orb of Venom does not stack with other Orb of Venoms. So, like I mentioned Ursa, Ursa will frequently buy his or own Orb of Venom. So be a little careful. You usually only want, like, one Orb of Venom per lane for sure. And if you really need to, technically you get multiple Orb of Venoms like in different lanes, but usually it's not so good. Usually you only want like one hero who needs it, and then they go around ganking people, and they bring the Orb of Venom to that lane. Like say you have a Tusk 4 position. He starts in the off lane, they have an Orb there, and then you go gank the mid or the safe lane, and you bring the Orb of Venom slow to those lanes. You want your lane to be aggressive, like we said at the start, because we only get this slow effect if we're fighting. If we were just going to pull the lane, try to do some antics like drag the creep wave around or avoid fights and just try to pull and get what we can out of the lane, we are literally getting no value out of Orb of Venom or Blightstone. So both of these items you want to, like you, you go into the lane knowing that you want to fight. Blightstone. So Blightstone also has no stats, all of that. So everything we said about Orb of Venom applies. If you are time stamping, time stamp skipping to this one, sorry, you probably have to go back to Orb of Venom because I talked about the prerequisites. But that was only like eight minutes, so that's not too bad. Point is, all the same prerequisites. You need to know you want to fight because this gives you no stats, and it only applies when you're right-clicking. You can't need other items, all that stuff. That's the quick summary. But now let's look at it. Two armor reduction for eight seconds. That time is a lot more forgiving than the two-second slow and damage of the last item. Two armor reduction could be good, could be bad. Again, an aggressive harass lane this time, though. We aren't slowing them. Slows can lead to kills because the enemy heroes just can't escape because they're slowed down. This just lets you do a bit more damage, but they can probably just run away. So it's more of a harass thing where we're just being really annoying and we are chipping them down. That's why you'll see range supports tend to be the ones... Well, actually, Blightstone's not that popular right now. But when it was, it tended to be on, like, range supports. Because they just needed a little bit more damage. And they're freely harassing. Ideally. It's not like, uh... Like, if you're constantly trading, then you need regen. You need stats. You need armor. You need stuff like that. But if you are the one getting free pot shots off on a on a melee hero or a, a ranged hero who has a really bad attack animation, then Blightstone can be good because you're getting all this free damage and you're just asking for a little bit more damage. If they are low armor, then two damage is or two armor reductions relatively better. We'll look at the numbers in a little bit, right after this actually. But yeah, the lower armor the enemy is, the better. Somewhere about three armor is probably ideal. And you're going to increase your ally damage. So Orb of Venom 
allowed your ally to get in attacks because they had enough damage. Blightstone increases the damage they do, but doesn't strictly allow them to get those auto attacks off. So your carry or your offlaner, they might have the damage. Or I'm sorry, they may not do quite enough damage, but they have a bit of crowd control, a slow or stun or something like that. And then Blightstone's a little better in those cases because you don't need the slow from Orb of Venom. Usually Blightstone is not a big enough item to lead to a kill, whereas Orb of Venom is. 15% slow is quite serious. Two armor reduction, not that much. And in fact, let's just get into the items. Oh, no, one last thing. So even though I said Orb of Venom is a little better for getting kills, it's a dead-end item. It doesn't build into anything anymore. Rip Scotty. Blightstone does. Many supports will get a medallion. And so Blightstone has a lot more late-game value. You're pretty much never going to build a Desolator on a, on a support, but the medallion and maybe Solar Crest can be pretty good. So even if you aren't necessarily getting kills with the Blightstone, as long as it helps you in your lane and then you build it into a medallion, like that was pretty good. But now we're going to go into the numbers, and I think that'll help make this a little clearer. All right, we're just going to use this. So here is the armor of the enemy. You don't really have to worry about the damage multiplier that much. And this is how much damage we have. So let's say our hero has 55 damage. That's pretty, I would say that's pretty average. I don't actually know what the average is, but that feels average to me. If they have no armor, you do 55 damage, fine. If they're a hero that has three armor, you actually only do 46 damage. So if you have a Blightstone, instead of doing 46 damage, you reduce their armor to one. You now do 51.9 damage, and that would be a five damage increase. Not too bad. The lower your damage is, the worse this effect is. You get less damage for it. The higher your damage is, okay, 100 is a little extreme. Let's do like 80. You see these differences are getting higher. So like if they had one armor and you get a Blightstone and you have 80 damage, instead of doing 75.5, you're now doing 84.5 damage, which is a nine damage increase per auto attack. So every time you get an auto attack off, you're getting nine extra damage. Now, most range heroes don't have 80, so that's a little extreme. Let's do five, 55. I think that is fine. That's why if the enemy has very low armor, like say they're a Phoenix or a Pudge, they pretty much have zero armor. You reduce it down to negative two. Like you're getting a lot, a lot of damage. And every time you auto attack, you're getting that damage. But here's the thing. This is the, this is the difference between Blightstone and Orb of Venom and why Orb of Venom tends to be a little better at getting kills. The Blightstone, you have to chip in like, let's say you have 55 damage. You chip in about 10 auto attacks. And we'll say each auto attack gets 5 extra damage. That Those 10 auto attacks, we get plus 50 damage. Like, honestly, if you're a ranged hero getting free attacks, that's good. But if you're a melee hero, and you slow the enemy down, one auto attack is 55, and that enables you to get off an extra auto attack, there's your extra 50 damage in one auto attack. Now, I know it's not quite clear because one case you did two auto attacks, the other case is like 11 auto attacks. But the thing is, a hero like Treant Protector, who has like 90 damage, he doesn't care about amplifying his damage by like 10, 9, 8, whatever extra damage. He wants to get one more auto attack off because that is 90 damage. It's way better. You're going to see when we go into the heroes, Melee heroes like the Orb of Venom, ranged heroes tend to do a Blightstone. I'll also throw out people like Nature's Prophet. The more summons are in a lane, Blightstone can have some value. Like Nature's Prophet will get one because it boosts his damage, and then all his treants do like one extra damage. That doesn't sound like a lot, and in one instance it's not. But that's why the concept was when we get to freely auto attack a lot, then we like having those items because it slowly adds up. 10 extra damage here, 10 extra damage here. It slowly builds up, 100 extra damage, like so on and so forth, they're out of region. Now here's a bigger chart if you want to pause the screen, or you could just do these yourself. But if you had like 40 damage, 50 damage, 60 damage, these are the different values you would get. But this is just basic armor calculations. Anyone can set this up in an Excel. Ah, shoot, I forgot to do my... Look, guys, we're at Orb of Venom colors in the background. Look, we're Blightstone now. Whoa. Okay, let's go look at the heroes. 
here we are at the recommended heroes. I did not think it would be this extreme. And I'm sure there are other heroes I could buy these items. But when I when I made this list, I was like, oh, I guess it's actually a lot more straightforward than I thought. I only did two. I only did an Orb of Venom list and a Blystone list. These are heroes that could potentially buy one of these starting items. And it's not... Like, I've seen it enough where I, I would consider these heroes to buy it. Other heroes could do it, but I would say it's just slightly less common. Now, whether you should do it, you'll have to refer back to what we just talked about. Can you be aggressive in this lane? Like, uh, is the enemy lineup a burst lineup? Then maybe you don't want an Orb of Venom or Blightstone because you need to buy some stats. Maybe you don't want to play the lane. Like, say you're a Earth Spirit. Maybe it's not a game where you can play aggressively and you're just going to pull a lot. Then you don't want to start an Orb of Venom. You'll have to decide that on your own. It's not, like, it's not that I see one hero and I think, this is a Blightstone game. It's more about these heroes could make use of the Orb of Venom, and then you'll have to decide, is this a game where I want to make use of the Orb of Venom? But let's talk about why each of these heroes likes these items. Earth Spirit. He does not bring in enough damage to get kills. But he has a lot of crowd control. So he ganks, like say he ganks mid, he stuns the enemy mid laner. He has his own slow, and then he applies Orb of Venom slow as well. And hopefully that buys enough time for your mid laner to add in extra damage and get the kill. It doesn't have to be the mid lane, it could be your safe, off lane, whatever. Point is, Earth Spirit wants to slow down the enemy heroes so that he can hopefully get off another round of spells before they get under the tower or something. Okay, under the tower would be kind of extreme, but maybe maybe if they were far out in lane, you would get enough, enough time. But in general, the slow is just preventing people from getting out. That's why it's really good. ET, like you get Astral Spirit, you get a lot of damage, and then you want to use that damage. You don't want them to run away. You slow them down. All of these heroes, no one wants to fight them for a long time. You're going to see. So Mars, he has a slow with his God's Rebuke. You combine that with an Orb of Venom. Makes landing the spear very easily. Uh, very easy. Mars has pretty solid stats overall. So he's a very good trader at the beginning of the game. Spirit Breaker. He doesn't care about amplifying his damage. He just wants a chance to auto attack one more time. Because that could be another bash. And one extra bash is enough time to get another auto attack off. So he doesn't care about the damage. He's just trying to get as much slows to buy him more time to attack, hoping to get more bashes. All of that is crowd control time where his teammates are doing damage. That's why he likes it. Treant Protector, we already used him as an example. He's got two slows. You combine that with an Orb of Venom slow, his super high base damage, and he walks through trees. So it's like you pop out of trees, you slow them, and they're going to run away from the trees because you have a speed boost there. And you're really slow. So like, honestly, even though you slow them with the Orb of Venom, there's a chance they're still faster than you. And so you like combine it with your other slows to give you enough time to get one or two more auto attacks. That's like 200 damage there because your base damage is so high. Tusk, oops. Tusk, when you pop tag team, no one wants to fight you. They know you have bonus damage from here. Everyone is just going to try to run away. And that's the whole point of the Orb of Venom. You combine that slow with tag team slow so that they can't get out of the tag team effects and that you and your teammate can do all the damage in that time. Undying. It's a little uncommon to buy Orb of Venom undying, but I have seen it. The idea being that you steal a lot of strength, you get a lot of damage yourself. Again, no one wants to fight in undying. And so you slow them down with the Orb of Venom. But Windlace is kind of similar where it speeds you up and that lets you keep up with the enemy heroes. But if you have an Orb of Venom and slow the enemy hero down, now we still can keep up with them, but our lane partner can as well. Bounty Hunter, this is a little less common. But he likes to pop out of his Shadow Walk and apply a strong, like the Orb of Venom plus this slow is pretty good. And you like surprise burst them a bit with Janata. It's... In this case, for Bounty Hunter, it's not so much about playing the lane as it is when you gank, because you can, like, invis pop up slow enemy heroes. Oh, I should have said, Orb of Venom only... <laughs> the slow needs to be effective to validate the Orb of Venom. Like, if you're playing against the Queen of Pain, 
she's just going to blink away from the slow, and then it's not as good. However, it could still be workable, because, like, say she uses the blink aggressively, heroes with an escape like that are usually really bad when they don't have the escape. So if she uses blink, and you threaten to pressure her with an orb of venom, she, like, she either will take a lot of damage, or she has to play extremely cautiously until she has blink up again. Pangolier, I've seen it, where he applies it with Swashbuckle. And he just, he has like a really good attack animation. And uh, when you get Lucky Shot going as well, the combo is just, like, it's pretty nice. You're, you're stacking slows. A lot of these heroes stack slows, if that's not obvious. Ogre Magi, very strong. Has a lot of armor, has a lot of natural HP regen, has a slowing spell. And so when you combine it with Orb of Venom, you just run at people and hit them. And they don't want to trade an Ogre Magi because he'll just heal it up really quickly. Uh, Void Spirit. Honestly, just like any melee four could potentially build an Orb of Venom because that lets them auto-attack you more and that's really irritating. So yeah, you'll notice these are all melee heroes. You never really want to fight these guys. Vo I should finish. Void Spirit, it makes it easier to attack to land Aether Remnant and Dissimilate. I, I just don't... Void Spirit 4 is not very popular. Let's get rid of him. Void Spirit, Spirit 4 is not very popular right now, so it's kind of kind of meme -y to consider it. Let's move on to Blightstone. They're almost all ranged heroes. They all like to freely harass. Or they have minus armor. So, like, Little Shredder now got added in to have... Uh, to have armor reduction. So you're stacking armor reduction. That's really good. And then you already have a slow and a stun to let your carry get on top of them. So you don't need an Orb of Venom to slow the enemy down, which you would barely do because it's only 4%. But instead, you just amplify all the damage your carry can do when you fire snap them on top of the enemy, for example. Bounty Hunter is one of the only melee heroes I think could potentially still start Blightstone. And that's because the Janata Burst popping out of Invis. He just likes to boost this damage up a little bit. But in the end, I, I don't think it's very worth it. The thing is, Bounty Hunter could build it into a medallion. Like, that's pretty common. But I, I just don't think starting Blightstone on Bounty Hunter is very good. A Bounty Hunter himself is in a, I don't know, kind of a weird spot as a support, maybe. But he's not really an off. I don't know. This isn't a Bounty Hunter video. Don't worry about it. Maybe I just don't know how to play the hero anyways. Marana, again, she's a hero who, with Leap, gets natural attack speed bonuses. Gives her the flexibility to get a lot of free auto attacks off. And if you land an arrow, you don't need a slow. You just want to do a lot of damage in that time. Not just your own damage, but your teammate's damage as well. Venge, she's not so good at right-clicking herself. Well, to an extent, but her attack range is pretty short. So she's not so much like a Marana or AA who's like getting these free attacks off. But because she has Wave of Terror and a stun... And her Venjora kind of boosts her own damage a little bit. You combine all these three with the Blightstone. So you subtract a lot of armor. And you have time to attack them. And you've already boosted your damage a little bit. Now you're getting another little boost. Plus your Venjora is boosting your carry as well. And so then the two of you attack someone you've Blightstoned and Wave of Terror. Like it's a lot of damage adding up. Weaver. Again, free auto attacks. He's got his Shikuchi. So he's not worried about like getting killed most of the time because he can just Shikuchi get away. He doesn't need stats. He doesn't need move speed. He's just looking for more damage. Ancient Apparition. Actually, this is a good time to say. One of the reasons Blightstone is not so popular right now is because people are building to play the lane very heavily. And I've, I've been seeing a lot more stat builds where you get like two iron branches, a circlet, that kind of thing, a fairy fire, because that gives you a lot of right click. You know, we talked about how Blightstone at 55 damage gives you about 5 damage per auto attack. If you get 5 attributes, like that's 5 damage as well. Or like 3 attributes and a fairy fire, that's 5 damage. And you're getting more health, more slightly more armor, stuff like that. Like the benefits are there a bit more. And I've been seeing that a little more. Uh, but anyways, Ancient Apparition has a really long attack range. That's, that's it. He's just someone who can benefit from like free auto attacks. And so I've seen some people get Blightstone. Bane, same deal. No one really wants to trade with Bane because of his brain sap. And so like if you give him a Blightstone, he does a lot of damage. But again, not very common. I see... In fact, we can kind of get rid of him. I don't think it's that weird. 
it's not that weird if I saw it, but it's not like I more people do like double fairy fire, double double stats, some extra mangoes, things like that. That's usually a little better. Chen does not need other items. He's a hero who could like literally not spend any money and he would still be viable in the lane. Uh, because of the way Holy Persuasion and his other stuff works. Although you should, of course, spend your money. And because he has that option, he can get a Blightstone. That makes his right clicks really annoying. And it amplifies whatever creep he ends up stealing to attack you. Like, that creep will do bonus damage against you as well. Dazzle. I love being able to start Blightstone on Dazzle. It's a little meme -y, though. Because Poison Touch is physical, if the enemy heroes don't expect it, they are a low armor hero, for example, or you're already fast enough to keep auto attacking them, you can do a lot of damage with Poison Touch and uh, subtracting their armor. So that's pretty good. Plus, it carries over later because you might get a medallion. And when you get your ultimate, you do reduce other people's armor. So combining a Blightstone and or medallion and your ultimate, you really tear through people's armor uh, pretty quickly. But I really like cheesing people with like maxing out Poison Touch and getting a Blightstone and a quick medallion. But it'll, it's most ideal if the enemy is low armor. Enchantress, a very fast hero, good an, good attack animation. So she's getting a lot of free pot shots off with a Blightstone. Like, if you're bored of hearing this, it's because the logic is the same for like every hero. Nature's Prophet, a lot of free right clicks, boosts up his nature's call. Like he can sprout you. He doesn't need a slow. And the slow for a ranged hero sucks anyways. Wind Ranger. It's actually less common now. It used to be that she would get Wind Run. And she would auto attack. And if you tried to trade her with right clicks. She was doing Blightstone extra damage. And you weren't dealing any damage to her. Because she would Wind Run at all. Now I'm seeing more support Wind Rangers use Power Shot. And because of that. I've seen Wind Rangers instead of getting Blightstone. They get like uh, two iron branches, a circlet, mantle of intelligence. Because that gets you about the same amount of damage, it scales less technically than the armor reduction. But those stats give you armor. Or, who cares about the armor? Give you mana. And the mana lets you cast power shot again. Or it gives you more health. Um, and so who cares that you take a couple extra auto attacks from Wind Run, you've boosted up your health with those stats, things like that. Uh, but yeah, that used to be a common build for her. I am i don't think it's terribly common to see Blightstone as a starting armor item right now. I think I said that, but like, it's not too weird if I saw it. Puck, another hero who just like tries to get a f ton of free auto attacks off when Puck was a playing as a support. It's not very common right now either. But yeah. I feel like that should help, I hope. A general rule, Orb of Venom is for melee heroes. Blightstone is for ranged heroes. That's not a hard rule. There are cases where sometimes you might get a Blightstone as a melee hero, but usually not as a starting item. And I, I really don't think Orb of Venom is very good on ranged heroes right now. If it gets changed in the future, maybe. But right now, I would just say, just don't get it on a ranged hero. You need to know you're going to play aggressive in your lane. And you have to be able to right-click, because otherwise it doesn't do anything. If you're not going to right-click, buy something else. You have to plan on just attacking a ton. That's why heroes like Wind Ranger, Nature's Prophet, Enchantress, like, it feels great. You just, like, you're fast, you just attack. Or, like, for Venge and Snapfire, it's like, wow, we're going to... When I go on this guy and shred his armor, he's not going to know what's coming. Like, there's a... To me, it's like clearer, and I hope it's clear to you guys too, but I don't know if it is or not. Um, so let me know. Make sure you want to kill people. I, I'll clarify. Orb of Venom is more about killing people and maybe getting a lot of extra damage in. Blightstone is about just getting in free damage. But the idea of getting in all that free damage is you lower them to the point where you could potentially kill them, or they at least have to be scared of dying, so then they back off. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you guys still have questions. I'm sure you are. They're complicated. Dota's complicated. Uh, but I hope that helped clear it up a little bit, at least. Even if I repeated a lot of stuff. Goodbye!